Muy buenos días. Good morning to all of you guys. Uh, gracias, Ricardo, for the introduction. So, uh, my name is Edgar Cerón. I am the CEO for Aldea Mexico, and today I'm here to uh, talk to you about the experiences that we have had with uh, AWS running uh, some of our platforms. So, first of all, let me tell you who we are, who we are as a company. Well, that's, that's me, of course. <laughs> So who we are as a, uh, as a company? We belong to a group that is called Marcatel. Marcatel is a company based in Mexico. Uh, the company belongs to a, a very important guy in Mexico that it's, uh, his name is uh, Don Gustavo de la Garza. Uh, he was a pioneer creating a paging company in Mexico and Latin America who later created this uh, telecommunications company which belong uh, which is one of the most important ones because of the fiber optics network that we own. Something that is really important for us on, on our network is latency. As Ricardo was mentioning before, the latency for video is really important. Uh, Marketel, uh, what we provide are mostly data and voice services, but because of the latency that we have, we started providing uh, video services as well. So Marketel acquired Aldea like 12 years ago, a company based in Montreal, and then uh, they acquired a, another company that is now Aldea Mexico, which is the one that I run. So we as Aldea, we provide many different services. What we do is we provide, or we do video contribution in uh, Latin America. So we acquired the content from many venues all over the world, mostly from stadiums for, for live sports. And we uh, contribute the content to many different broadcasters all over America. So we have many different type of customers and we have participated in many different type of events like World Cups, like uh, the Olympics, the Pan American Games. And now as Aldea Mexico, we don't do only contribution, but we do video distribution as well. On the video distribution, we do not only uh, cover sports or uh, uh, media, uh, entertainment, I would say, companies. We work as well with many different education companies, with government, with private institutions, because when you talk about media, the media is something huge. I mean, there's, there's a lot of different use cases that, we can, that you can apply for, for this type of, uh, of solutions. So if you could please help me uh, running the video, please. <coughs> 10, 9, ignition sequence starts, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. You guessed it, the Beatles. This rock and roll group has taken over as the kingpins of musical appreciation among the younger elements.
So that's a little bit of who we are and what's what we have been doing for the uh, past years. So we as a company, we, uh, on the, the footprint that we had on media was to go from generating content, which means content production and events coverage, contribution, which was you know, important because we were uh, at the beginning just doing fiber optics contribution and satellite. And of course, we had to start uh, changing the company and starting providing as well uh, IP contribution over the public internet. We do encoding, we do transcoding, we do uh, content management and content delivery. Nevertheless, when we started talking to our customers, for some of them, it wasn't enough. For some of them, they were asking us to start providing them with uh, some OTT solutions. So we had like this need of going beyond distribution. But uh, it, was, it was for us at the beginning, we thought that the best approach would be to partner with uh, someone, with one of those uh, OTT uh, platforms out there, uh, because there are like many in the market. So we thought that it was probably the best approach. But uh, some of our customers are, you know, uh, very demanding, I would say, in terms of their requirements, in terms of creating something tailor-made for them. So we really wanted to start building our own OTT platform, but we had many different questions. How can we build it? What's like the first one that we, that we had? I mean, we didn't have like a, you know, bunch amount of uh, uh, co-developers in the team to start building something from scratch. So it was very hard for us to, to start trying to figure out if it was possible or, or, or not to build a solution. How to be different from many other platforms in the market? Again, there are hundreds of uh, OTT platforms out there, so how would we be different from them? How expensive could it be? I mean, how much money do we require in order to start building these solutions? And the most important one, time to market. Is it going to take us one year, two years? How much time do we need to start building our OTT platform? And then we have many different challenges. We had to be really fast. We had to start developing something that couldn't take us that much amount of time. We needed something reliable, scalable, and secure. The secure part is very important because when you talk to content providers, uh, usually what you hear is about the concern that they have with the security of their content. How are you going to ensure that my content is going to be secure? Either if it's a VOD content or if it's a live content. So we needed something very secure, scalable. I mean, when you, when you talk about live, mostly live streaming for sports, it's very difficult to forecast how many concurrent users you're going to have. How many are you going to have? 100? 10,000 users? 100,000 users? Sometimes you do not even know. You can guess, but uh, at the beginning, it's really hard to, to forecast a live streaming. So we needed a reliable CDN, and we needed to integrate with third-party solutions because we wanted to have the best of the different solutions out there to provide like, uh, the best uh, experience for our customer. And at the end, something really important as well. We needed to build something with an aggressive pricing for Latin America. We knew that if the pricing could fit Latin America, then it could be killer for, for the Americas. In Latin America, let's uh, you know, remember the, the exchange rate when you talk about US dollars is not that uh, easy. So we needed to be really aggressive for those markets as well. And that's how we got into AWS. We started looking to AWS and at the beginning we started looking to, into media services. That was our core, you know, uh, market doing media, doing video. So that's how we uh, had our first approach into AWS. So we started looking into, into what AWS could uh, provide to us, and we realized that we could do encoding, we could do transcoding, we could do packaging, we could do live streaming. And even there were some services like Media Tailor that would allow us to you know, play a little bit more with the video, uh, like uh, doing ad insertion, watermarking, and many different type of services that we could start you know, doing on video. So, that's, that was our first approach. I would say around one year and a half, we started looking into this. But then we started looking into all of these, you know, little icons with all these weird names that at the beginning for us was like, okay, Cognito, Dynamo, Direct Connect, Code Deploy. So what is this about? So when we started looking deep into all of these, 
we realized that all of these components could be not, not only like uh, important services from Amazon, but from AWS, but they could start building our you know, core solution. So we realized that we didn't have to worry about infrastructure, virtual machines, and networking, and everything around you know, the core solution that we had to build for our OTT platform. And that's why we decided to start working on, on uh, AWS, because we figured out that it, it was going to be easier, better, more secure, more scalable to start building everything on AWS. And something important, serverless. So we don't have to worry about how many concurrent users our customers are going to have, because you know, we don't have to start adding more storage or more processor, or more memory. We don't have to even worry about those type of things. And that's how we got into our platform what, uh, that we call Aldea Flex. But Aldea Flex, I'm going to show you, but it's not only now about OTT, which of course was our first approach. But we, we now have different services. The first one is what we call MediaFlex. It's uh, an our OTT platform. Of course, what we do is, like many other uh, OTT platforms out there, we do VOD, we do live, we can monetize content. It's a cloud-based solution. Multi-screen, multi-device, all those different things. Uh, you can integrate all your advertising, pre-rolls, post-rolls. Uh, we have elastic storage. So we have a bunch of different things, but something really important. We could customize and suit uh, the client needs. So we could start creating like tailor-made uh, solutions for our customers. What uh, you're looking right now, it's uh, one of our customers, which is uh, Panam Sports. Panam Sports, they are the uh, Panam Sports Channel is uh, the organization that handles the Pan American Games. So the platform that we have right now is providing them with a solution where they can start managing all their content. They do live streaming, they do VOD, they, they are not monetizing the content, it's free, so please go ahead and take a look into, into the website, panamsportchannel.org, and uh, you will, I mean, you, you will notice how, how simple you know, the experience can be for us to start creating like uh, very tailor-made solutions and services for our customers. But after that, some of our customers started requesting different things like, hey, Edgar, we want to do live streaming, but we don't want to do it just on our OTT. We, we want to start using as well, you know, social networks. We want to use Facebook. We want to use Twitter. Uh, we want to use uh, YouTube and all those different things. So by now, it's really hard for us to start, you know, doing live streaming on many different platforms. And that's when we started building as well on top of AWS what we, what we call our social flex, which is a platform that lets you stream just one single stream into the platform and then do two things. One of them is to stream that out into our own CDN, but it lets you as well to stream into different social networks. And very important, you can add uh, you know, wider marking, you can add advertising, something important because you know, we have heard that as well, like, okay, or what, how, how you do it in order to avoid Facebook or YouTube to block the advertising that you are inserting. So what we do is that we insert the, the advertising like in the uh, base broadcast or base streaming that we are creating. So Facebook and, and uh, YouTube, they don't even find out that there is a publicity or an ad inserted into the video. It goes like in the based uh, transmission of the, of the stream. So that's our social flex uh, solution. We have many different customers as well using uh, this solution. As you can see, those are like uh, some of the screenshots that we have. I'm going to talk to you about two of our customers, which is funny because if you, if you look into these two, they are two completely different markets. One of them is government, Suprema Corte de Justicia. So these guys, they were streaming for all the citizens in uh, Mexico. Uh, they are streaming all of their you know, internal events. So what's what they are doing? They are now using our platform in order to stream to Facebook and to YouTube, and of course into the private, private CDN as well. But we have a production company as well. And they said, hey, I mean, we, we are a production company. We don't want to you know, mess with uh, the streaming technology. They had some problems with uh, YouTube and Facebook because they said we were streaming, we had a problem, and we had no one to, to call when we had that problem. 
So now we are taking care of those type of, of, uh, you know, of issues with them. They just uh, do the service with us and we take care of all the technical part from there. And this one is, uh, is another use case that we have had, which uh, has been very you know, interesting for me because it's uh, uh, on the lab industry. This customer, they, you know, at the beginning when we started building all of these solutions, we thought we were thinking more on sports and entertainment, but not into a laboratory that uh, wanted to do some things with security. They guys, what they said was like, you know, I mean, we are streaming right now. We have our security cameras placed in many different uh, points, but we need to start recording the security cameras. And after that's recorded, we need to back it, <coughs> sorry, to back up the content. And we need as well to start running some artificial intelligence processes to do face recognition and identify objects like weapons or any other, you know, uh, element or object that could be important for them. And we want to manage the content, and we don't wanna, uh, want it to be that expensive. So we started with all of these solutions, building this uh, service for this lab industry. And it's not that I don't want to you know, let you know who that is, but uh, you know, we are just in the process of, uh, of implementing this, this uh, service for these customers. So I'm not allowed to, to tell you who they are, but it's uh, one of the, the most important ones in Mexico. Then we got to storage as well into AWS, and we created what we, what we uh, call Storage Flex. So when you talk about storage, and I was saying about those funny names on, uh, on Amazon, on AWS, you look into S3, you, you hear Glacier, and you hear all those different names. Which is important to let you know is that those different type of storages let you have different levels of storage, like what we call hot storage, warm storage, and cold storage, which could be to go like storing the content on tapes into having that available immediately, yeah, uh, having the content available immediately. So usually it's very hard to manage those different levels or, or types of uh, storage on AWS. Having cold storage is much, much cheaper, like for archiving content. But in order to move the content from uh, cold into warm or into hot, it's uh, really hard. So what we built was a platform in top of AWS storage that just allows you with some simple clicks to move the content from hot to warm to storage to uh, cold, I'm sorry. Have statistics, how much content do I have on hot? How much content do I have on, on warm or in, on cold? And we implemented as well a two-factor authentication sharing uh, service solution. So what you do is you just can uh, you know, click into one of the content. You say to you're going to share that content with. It requires you to, to have like an email and a, a phone number. So it sends out an email to the user with the link to download the content. And it sends out a code, uh, an SMS code. Uh, into the phone just to access the content. So who needs that and you know what for? So we have Panam Sport Channel as well. On the last uh, Pan American Games that were running on uh, Peru uh, last year, they had like this issue because they had cameramen all over Peru recording content. So the, their concern was, how am I going to take that content into the uh, main production center? which was in Lima. So what they did is they started using this platform. All the cameramen every day were uploading the content into the platform. They could create folders for, one of the, uh, for each of the cameramen, and they were downloading on the main facility all the content to do the production. So, and something important as well, the content, the master content, didn't have to be deleted because you know it was it was uh, like a lot of storage. But it was after they were using the content, they were just sending out that to to call the storage in order to make it cheaper to store the content into the platform. We have an enterprise uh, company as well that uh, wanted to do backup of all of their servers and all of their infrastructure, and they are sending you know out as well all the all the content into storage in this particular case they are just using cold storage they said we don't want to do tapes anymore we want to be we want it to be cheap and that's why they started moving everything into into our platform and finally we as a marketer we had the fiber we had the aws services uh, up and running 
So we decided to become a partner as well for Direct Connect, which basically what it means is that we are now able to give a fiber with a direct connection uh, to AWS in order to make things faster, better, more secure, more reliable, and of course, with the, uh, bettest, uh, with the best latency on the market. So, finally, what does this mean? What we have is we have a platform with worldwide access, the cloud, that's uh, you know, the basics of the cloud. Our client, uh, customers, I was gonna say clientes, sorry, our customers, uh, I mean, again, we talked at the beginning, sports and enter entertainment. But now we have government, education, private sector, so we have many different customers using these types of platforms. So we started working, as I, as I said before, with uh, integration with artificial intelligence for face recognition and identify objects. And something very important, you know, I'm usually behind all the AWS guys asking them for what's next, what's coming, because every single new feature that they release is a possibility for us to add some more new features into our platform. And now, this is our footprint. So we went from generation, contribution, and distribution to manage content as well, and that's uh, where we have the media flex, the social flex, and the storage flex platforms. So that's pretty much uh, uh, what we have done in the last uh, one year and a half.